Okay, in this session, we're going to switch to a more investment finance focused task. What we're going to do is we're going to calculate a mean variance optimal portfolio. So given a certain set of stocks, a certain set of parameters for those uh, stocks, uh, we're going to calculate uh, the portfolio with the highest reward to risk ratio. A little bit of background on this is what we have to do or what we're going to do in here is we're going to first estimate the parameters. So what I mean by this is we're going to use the Markowitz mean variance optimal uh, portfolio method and what we require here is expected returns and a variance covariance matrix so specifically a positive definite variance covariance matrix so we the portfolio has a positive variance so we're first going to to calculate uh, these these parameters in the original paper Markowitz just assumed that you know these parameters uh, so you can, if you want, you could just make the parameters up, but then you have to make sure that your variance covariance matrix is positive definite. Often people use historical data. That's what we'll do here. Uh, once we have these parameters, then the, we, it's a case of nonlinear optimization. We simply have to minimize the portfolio variance for a certain level of, of expect, uh, for a certain level of um, expected return. Or, or equivalent, we, we could, for a given level of variance, we could maximize the expected return. Uh, both are uh, equivalent. More common to, given a certain expected return, minimize the variance. Now, and once we have that, that'll give us our efficient frontier, and then we can use a risk-free rate to get the optimal portfolio among the whole frontier of portfolios. One thing that, that we'll talk about here, or one thing that's great about Python, again, is there's a very, there's a large ecosystem. So the nice thing is we're not going to have to write any of this code ourselves. We're going to use uh, a Python package. Uh, why, why don't I introduce them now? A Python package, uh, Y Finance, to, to pull the stock data, stock price data from Yahoo. And then we're going to use this package Pi Portfolio Opt. I'll go ahead and install these right now uh, and this will give us um, the uh, this will calculate the optimal portfolio the um, efficient frontier and so forth so uh, w uh, these packages are available or the github for these packages I am installing them from pip but the the github is here uh, for each of these packages uh, so I've linked that here once we've installed them, I'm going to load the libraries and one thing to talk about here is, okay, so this line is going to give us stock data. So I'm going to pull the stock data. I'm going to pull it for these stocks. This is Exxon, Apple, Tesla, Pfizer, Procter & Gamble, Verizon, JP Morgan, Amazon, Boeing, and General Electric, GE. And, it, and I can have a start and end date. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if it looks, this may not look familiar to you, saying, okay, well, well you know, what's going on here? I just have the stock ticker separated by a space, right? And that'll go ahead and, and pull the data, and now I have all the data here. So one thing to consider is f to know how to use this function available from this package, this download function. I have to go and read the GitHub and, and read maybe the quick start and read the documentation. So in other words, it's not obvious that you would just be able to, to put a space. So I probably saw this here, right? Um, so this just comes from reading the documentation on the package. So there's nothing in base finance that tells me that this is okay. All right, so once we have uh, the data, um, I'm going to need the just simply the adjusted close data, right? So um, this is gonna give me uh, data on, it's also, if I scroll to the to the right here, you'll see it has close and it has high and, and low and so forth uh, and volume, but we only need the adjusted close. So with this, I'm simply choosing the adjusted close. Uh, so that returns this data frame. And then we need to convert each of these into percent changes. And Pandas uh, has a, um, a function to do this. This is stock data. I think it inherits from pandas because this is the same pandas function. Uh, so I'll calculate stock returns. What this does here is it says just give me from the first row onward. M remember the first row of the data frame, well I should say this is the second row. The first row is, is denoted by a zero. Uh, so what I'm saying is give me, get rid of the first row and give me everything afterwards. Uh, remember the idea is Let's say I um, let's say I, I don't have this. 
right? And I calculate these stock returns, and you'll see an NA in the front. Obviously, we lose one day when we calculate um, changes, right? So we have no percent change for the first day here. So I'm just saying give me every day after that. So get rid of the NANs, right? And so now I have um, stock returns where I don't have any, uh, not a numbers. Once we have uh, the stock returns, we can calculate the uh, expected returns and the variance covariance matrix. What I have here commented is how to get the raw ones However, this, the Pi Portfolio Op package has uh, functions that are automatically going to convert them into annual and adjust for the fact that these are samples. So these are uh, convenience functions, so I'm going to go ahead and use that and uh, calculate the, um, ex you know, the expected returns that we're going to feed into our uh, portfolio optimization. Now, what you can note here is that we have we have an outlier. So Tesla up about, you know, a thousand percent. Uh, so uh, I don't, depending on how familiar you are with portfolio optimization, you realize it's only as good as the input. So right now I can tell you it's going to put a lot of, um, a lot of our portfolio in Tesla, right? You, you, um, cause what we're saying is we expect Tesla to go up by a thousand percent. So it's going to say, this is a, not a tough call. Let's put a lot in, in, in Tesla. Uh, so this is, this isn't, related to the Python, this is related to the finance, um, you know, and this is the whole garbage in, garbage out. The idea here is in Markowitz portfolio optimization, it just assumes you know these. So if I were to do this in reality, I would probably lower this. You know, I might use an 18% seems reasonable for Pfizer, but I might lower this to, uh, what do you think Tesla's going to earn? Uh, I don't know, 20% return, maybe a 20% return. Okay. Um, we also have convenience functions for the variance covariance matrix. Uh, we, we could uh, we take a look at this variance covariance matrix. Let me see what the print function will do on here. Um, yeah, so we have our variance covariance matrix. Uh, obviously, these are variances in the diagonal, right? So we have um, and we could calculate the standard deviations if we'd like. I have. I'm also showing the types here. The types are pandas core series. Um, pandas core data frame. So the, the expected returns returns a series, this returns a data frame. So we know we can operate on this if we wanted to like any other data frame. And that's sort of important. What you might see here is, um, yeah, we did it. We did import pandas as PD, but a lot of, a lot of these packages here, um, and it's common that, uh, right, so this package requires pandas. It's going to be built off of pandas and NumPy. Um, similarly, this is going to require most likely pandas or numpy. Um, so one thing to consider is this is these packages are building on other packages, right? So even if we're 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 using these packages, it's still built on uh, pandas and numpy. Why rewrite all the functionality there? Um, good. Okay, so now we have our expected returns. We have our variance covariance matrix. Uh, we can easily go ahead. Let's get rid of this and calculate. Um, because this might be a little different than previously. Let's calculate the efficient frontier, right? So what we're going to do is this is going to give us an efficient frontier, and this is going to give us the maximum sharp ratio, right? Um, let me see if I can go ahead and print a, uh, if it has, a, so print the efficient frontier, and the max sharp ratio. Now this is just giving us the, uh, this is just giving us the, um, the, uh, the portfolio with the maximum sharp ratio. So let me rerun that. So what this gives us here <clears throat> is um, once we've created this efficient frontier, this is that nice, uh, the efficient frontier. We can graph it if we like, but th this is the efficient frontier. What it does is it just gives us these um, for every, <clears throat> for every expected return, it just gives us the portfolio weights. Remember the solution is a weight with the lowest um, variance or volatility, right? So it just gives us this curve here. So we can invest anywhere on this curve. Uh, if you remember a little bit of the underlying finance of this, once you then give me a risk-free rate, then I can invest anywhere by varying a portfolio of the risk-free rate anywhere on this line, um, which will connect the risk-free and the efficient frontier to get that line to the greatest area of annualized, you know, the highest annualized return per unit risk, 
I just find this tangency point. So, you know, maybe the tangency point will be around here and that gives me the optimal portfolio. I'll link to a little bit of the finance here. I don't want to go through a whole lesson on the finance, but just in case if you need a refresher. But that's what this does. It calculates that efficient frontier and then it goes ahead and, and, and in essence finds that tangency point. And what we can see is it says put 76% of our portfolio in Tesla and 23% in GE, right? So it's just saying, hey, you know, you're expecting Tesla to earn a thousand uh, uh, percent return. It's not tough, you know, um, invest in Tesla. Not surprising, right? Um, what we can do, let's see here with this portfolio performance. So what this gives us is a <clears throat> what this portfolio is expected to do over the next year would be an 816% return with a 60% volatility. Uh, that's obviously would be great. Um, however, right, uh, we know that this is, well, I shouldn't say I know Tesla isn't going to do it. But it's likely not going to do it again. So um, one common thing to do here is to say, okay, well, one, you could go ahead and change this, right? So right now we know this is a series, so I can go replace this number with something that I would would, would think is more reasonable. Uh, what is also common to do, because we know that Markowitz tends to be really, um, like I said, it, it, it tends to, to put portfolios into, um, if there's an outlier like this, into you know, heavily into one stock, it's very common to limit 20%. Uh, so it's, it's common to tell the algorithm here, uh, the maximum you can put into any stock is 20%, 20% of the portfolio. So this will be your exercise here. Um, te limit the weights uh, on every stock to 20%, um, and then state the optimal portfolio in terms of uh, the number of shares to be bought. So the, uh, uh, to do this, all you would have to do is say 100,000 times 0 0.23, 100,000 times 0 0.76. But first, recalculate it, limiting um, the maximum for each stock in your portfolio to be 20% of your portfolio. And you can easily find out how to do this here. It is very common when you're, again, you're learning Python, you're learning packages. Uh, it is it is a good skill to be able to go in and look on the GitHub README and start figuring out how um, packages work, you know. Uh, uh, so go ahead and look here for uh, weights on the... Uh, weights on the uh, the uh, limits on the weights of the portfolio and recalculate it.